بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continuing on in our treaties على قيد الوسطية مع شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى the last درس we left off we're explaining سورة الإخلاص which is a very important surah and the Prophet وسلم, indicated that Surah Al-Ikhlas is like one-third of the Qur'an in, in, in its meaning and Surah Al-Ikhlas it com combines the concept of Tawheed of pure monotheism and it also comprises as we mentioned before a nafi wal ithbat the affirmation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Tawheed and His uniqueness in His divine names and attributes and a negation, a nafi uh, of polytheism of associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless of whether that be in His Lordship or His uh, in Ibadah or in His divine names and attributes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship He's the Lord of the heavens and earth and there are there's nothing in his creation which is like him or comparable to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and as we mentioned before in the prior dars we mentioned the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says laysa kamithlihi shay wa huwa sami'un basir wa huwa sami'ul basir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there is none comparable to him uh, it said laysa kamithlihi shay there is none comparable to him so he began with nafi again with negating that any and all forms of shirk, any all, and all forms of comparison with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his creation. And then he affirmed for him divine attributes that he subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses, which is huwa sami'a-sami' al-basir. He is the all-seeing, the all-hearing, or the all-hearing and the all-seeing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in Surah Al-Ikhlas as well, it also, as Shaykh al-Islam mentioned, he said, في سورة الإخلاص التي تعدل ثلث القرآن حيث يقول so Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah was using as evidence this concept of negating shirk and affirming Tawheed and affirming the Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat Surة al-Ikhlas and that the and it also illustrates those the what it takes for those he had already mentioned previously in the in the darsan that this is a part of the creed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah that those who traverse the Sirat al Mustaqim from amongst the Nabiyin wa Siddiqin wa Shuhada wa Salihin meaning the Nabiyin meaning the Anbiya the Prophets alayhim after the Salatu wa Salam and the Siddiqin those who believe and follow the Prophets alayhim after the Salatu wa Salam and believe in ikhlas lila that they direct their worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and that they uh, are truthful and they're sincere in their ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also those who traverse the sirat al mustaqim is the shuhada those who are martyred in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the salihin the salihin meaning those who are the righteous who are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands and they avoid what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited and they are believers mu'mineen in, in righteousness so then the shaykh uh, read the ayat or mentioned the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim bismillah rahman rahim qul hu allahu ahad allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakulluhu kufuan ahad Allah Ta'ala says that this was said uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam say he is Allah the one the self-sufficient master whom all creatures need he neither eats uh, he neither he begets not nor was he begotten and there is none co-equal or comparable to him this is Surah Al-Khlas. 
and in that there are several benefits Sheikh Haras Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentions in his explanation of Aqidat Wasatiya he mentions that the reason Sheikh Islam Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentioned that uh, this is Surah Al-Ikhlas um, contains a third of the Quran he said the substance of this statement is that the Quran consists of three fundamental objectives so the Quran consists of three fundamental objectives the first is the prohibitions and those things which were commanded to the do's and don'ts which comprise the commandments in the practical ways and these form the subject matter of the discipline of fiqh, of jurisprudence and ethics meaning those ayats, those verses which are the verses of ahkam that have to do with the fiqh and jurisprudence and those verses which have to do with teaching us uh, how to have proper manners and, and ethics the second uh, thing that or subject of the Quran is the tales and the narratives which include the stories of the Messenger of Allah والسلام, and their communities and the punishments or disasters that have uh, have also been described which befell those who denied the messengers of Allah they also mention the promises meaning the the rewards that we'll get and the punishments the rewards for doing righteousness and the punishments for disbelief and hypocrisy and sinfulness the third subject of the Quran is the knowledge of Tawheed uh, Islamic monotheism and the description of those matters which relate to the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and his divine attributes and the order to believe in them and it is necessary for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to believe and affirm what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms and this is the most important among all the three so showing us that Tawheed being the most important uh, subject matter of the Quran what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized and was, is the most important thing for us and that's why we begin our da'wah as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began his da'wah with Tawheed calling the people to purify themselves by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and, and, and strengthening their aqidah, their belief as well as all the anbiya alayhim after salatu salam this was their minhaj, this was their methodology as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَكَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِبُ تَعْقُودُ we sent to every na uh, nation messengers to worship Allah alone and be away from ta'gud those things worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those other deities and so that shows us the importance of tawheed and that this is an imperative, this is an important or is the foundation of Islam. And of course, it is contained in the first pillar of Iman and the first pillar of Islam is that we bear witness that there's no God worthy of worship and that Muhammad was the last prophet and messenger. And also, as the first pillar of Iman, where the Prophet was asked about Iman and he said, In Tu'mina Billahi, as we mentioned before, that the Prophet said in the Hadith of Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam, that the first pillar, he said, it is to believe in Allah. The first thing is to believe in Allah. So, and that encompasses, as the ulama, they explain that that encompasses all the types of Tawheed. It encompasses the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right to be worshipped alone, and His divine names and attributes. Believing in all of that, all of that is contained in Tawheed, and all of that is a part of Tawheed. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said, about the explanation of Allah who summed the uh, Allah the eternal the absolute he said the master who is the perfect in his majesty the great one who is the perf who is perfect in his greatness the tolerant who is perfect in his toleration the omni omnipotent who is perfect in his omnipotence the all-knowing who is perfect in his knowledge the one who is perfect in all types of nobility and greatness that is the Vatiya that is Allah himself 
the most revered and the most powerful. He alone has these qualities, for they do not apply to anyone else except him. No one is equal to him, and no one is like him. SubhanAllah. Listen to that statement of uh, Ibn Abbas, how he described uh, uh, As-Samad, Allahu samad that, that, uh, that name, As-Samad, as is so, is one of the most encompassing names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. And as Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, described that it, it's very comprehensive in its meaning, referring to the master with per, in, in his perfect mastery, the great one, the, you know, who is perfect in his greatness, the one who is toler, the, the tolerant, who is perfect in his toleration, the omnipotent, who is perfect in his omnipotence. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, is, is perfect. His attributes, his divine attributes, they describe him uh, and, and his perfection. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is far removed from shirk and needing others. Uh, so, as we see, Imam Haras, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned, he said, so please understand how this surah encompasses the concept of Tawheed or oneness of Allah in belief and recognition of Allah. The affirmation of oneness for the Lord which is absolutely absolutely contradictory or it contradicts or it is in opposition would be a better way of describing it to polytheism. Polytheism is the opposite of course to monotheism and Surah Al-Ikhlas illustrates this it has both affirmation and negation, as we mentioned. al ifbat wa nafi are both in Surah Al-Ikhlas. And then the Shaykh, he mentioned, he said, uh, and his characteristic of being eternal and absolute, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which proves all the attributes for him that he cannot suffer from any defect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. He has no defects. Uh, that negation of the relationship of father and son, which is one of the implications that of his being in no need, all is characterized by a samadiyah. Then there is the negation of an equal, which includes negation of similarity, resemblance, and likeness. This surah dominates all those matters, meaning surah to class includes all of those matters, all of those issues. A surah which comprehends all these issues or compri is comprised of all these issues is rightly deserving of being called equal to one third of the Quran. And so we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil in the next dars. We will continue and we'll talk about uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayat Al-Kursi. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that and what the ulama have to say and how Shaykh Al-Islam used that or, or yastadilla bihada ayat that he used that ayah as evidence or how, how it was an, an evidence for uh, affirming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine uh, attributes and negating those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from, imperfection and shirk and the need to rest and the need to, to sleep and those attributes which his creation contains. And, and we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with tawfiq and ikhlas وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم